Hello everyone, it's me Paper Pirate. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm super excited to be doing a video about every brush pen that I own. In the next couple weeks, I'm planning on doing a really big jet pens order and getting some new brush pens and trying out some new calligraphy items as well as items that I'm planning on using for back to school. But right now, I just wanted to do a quick overview and show you my collection of brush pens. Now, I've shown this before on my channel, pretty recently actually. One of my favorite calligraphy supplies or brush lettering supplies is actually Crayola Super Tips markers. I think they're wonderful for beginners and for advanced brush letterers, but I won't be showing those in the, today's video because they aren't actually brush pens. Today's video is only gonna be about my collection of actual brush pens. So even though I like doing calligraphy with some other supplies, I'm not gonna be showing those other supplies in today's video. But with that out of the way, let me go ahead and show you guys my whole collection. So I'm going to start with these because these were the first um, actual brush lettering pens that I actually bought. Um, I will show you the first brush pen that I ever owned, which I don't know if I'm going to actually show you it on paper, but these are the Crayola watercolor um, brush markers. So these are like they're not actually brush pens, but they kind of are. They're like watercolor markers and the cap doesn't post on the end, so I don't know why I tried to do that. But these are like watercolor pens for children and you can get some line variation, but it's not very good. And since I purchased these when I was first beginning my brush lettering journey, the ends are absolutely frayed. So I don't know how much I would recommend these, um, but it also could have just been me not quite, you know, understanding how to brush letter yet. But they come in five colors. Two of the other colors dried out, so these are all that I have left. And quite frankly, I don't use these very much anymore, but they are extremely inexpensive and you can like paint with them. So if that's something that you're interested in, then you can, you know, take a look at those. But I, I don't think I would recommend them. Now, this is the first brush pen. Those are the first brush pens that I like bought when I was prepared to start brush lettering. And I actually featured those in what I believe is the second video in, on my channel, which is like the crayoligraphy one. Now, back, way back when, when I was into drawing manga, I actually bought a set of Pigma Micron pens. And this was way before I knew anything about planning or bullet journaling or calligraphy. Like this was a long, long, long time ago. And I actually found this Pigma brush pen in my repertoire. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is going to be perfect for brush lettering. But if you look at the tip, it's very long, it's very skinny. These are real bristles. These are not like um, things that you can, um, you know, easily brush litter with. Obviously, I'm trying it here and my lines look absolutely awful simply because it's just so hard to get that skinny, you know, um, that skinny upstroke, thick downstroke variation, line variation, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, but this was my first brush pen that I ever actually tried calligraphy with. And it's a honestly a wonder that I even stuck with calligraphy after using this brush pen because it was so difficult and I had such a hard time. Um, I definitely wouldn't recommend this for beginners. I can't even really use this pen and I have been doing calligraphy for three years now. So I don't know, this is much better suited for art. Of course, it does have that great quality pigment ink in it. And I don't know if they actually have one, but I would love to see a Pigma Micron pen more in like a pocket brush pen kind of style than an actual like singular bristle kind of style. Because I do love the pigment ink. It's very, very good quality. Um, but this was my first, I guess, brush pen that I actually owned and just forgot that I had it and tried to use it for calligraphy. It didn't quite work that well. And now let's get into pens that I actually like to use for calligraphy on a continued basis. So I'm going to start off here with this one. 
And this is the Pentel Fude Touch brush pen. It's got that traditional calligraphy sort of plastic nib here. And this is a favorite of Study Quill, if you watch her cha uh, channel. And obviously, you know, if Study Quill likes it, then it's a good pen. This is definitely one of my favorites. It's somewhere in between a hard and a soft nib. I think it would be great for beginners. I actually was fortunate enough to get this while I was still a beginner, and it was very helpful for me in learning how to do calligraphy, um, and I really, really enjoyed it. I still do enjoy it to this day. I wouldn't say that it's my favorite brush pen, just because some of the others that I'm going to show you later on, I personally prefer, um, but I do know a lot of people, this is their favorite brush pen. It's a great brush pen, um, especially for the price. You can get it on jet pens, you can get it on Amazon. It's pretty popular and readily available. Also, the body of this pen is so stunning. I don't know if it's gonna pick up on camera, but it's got like this, iridescent sparkly like there's glitter inside the body of the pen i really wish that it would focus it may not it's okay but i think you can still see it it's like sparkly and glittery and so pretty i just i just love it so much um here let me try and move this so you guys can see it better please focus thank you you see sparkly glitter very nice so I definitely like this pen, would recommend it. It's a lot of people's favorite. It's not personally my favorite, but um, I do like it. All right, we're gonna go to another sparkly potted pen next. These are the Zebra pocket brush pens. I think that's what they're called. Um, I could be 100% wrong about that, but it, I know this one is the medium nib size and you can get these on jet pens. I believe you can also get them on Amazon. Um, but this is a great brush pen. I have purchased this time and time again. It will last you a really long time. It is that like pocket brush pen. Again, sort of like the Pentel one. It's somewhere in between a really hard nib and a soft nib. So it's a medium size nib, but it's also a medium like hardness nib, if that makes any sense. Um, and if you're a newer brush letter, when I'm talking about hardness, I mean like how, uh, I don't know how else to describe it, but it's kind of like, if you saw me using the Pigma brush pen, it was very like sort of floppy and just kind of free and free moving. These bristles are synthetic. They aren't even really bristles. They are plastic nibbed pens and they do give you a little bit of resistance and that resistance is really what helps beginners um, make sure that they get those crisp up strokes and full down strokes. Just really good line variation. It's easier to get that if you have a harder pen. So this is somewhere in the middle. I would still recommend it for beginners. I really want to try the other pens in this collection because I haven't. I've only used this medium sized one, but I want to try the bold one and I want to try the fine one just to like see. But I really do like this pen. Um, it's really good quality. I think they're similarly priced to the Pentel Fude Touch ones too. And like I said, the sparkly body is really nice, but I think I actually might prefer this one because I love like the gold sort of metallic detailing on the body of the pen. Of course, that is just my personal aesthetic opinion, but I really do like this pen as well. The next pen that I'm going to show you is actually a combo of pens. And these are the Tombow Furenosuke brush pens. This one is a soft brush pen and this one is the hard brush pen. And I have to say that these two are probably my favorites out of my collection. And I prefer the soft nib one now more than the hard nib one. Um, and that's simply because now that I am a more mature brush letterer, I don't necessarily like, well, obviously I can't get my line variation right here um, when I'm filming, but I really appreciate having a bit more control. See, when I was a beginner, I think I probably preferred the hard nibbed version of this pen simply because it's, it's, 
it's hard. Like it's a very hard nibbed pen. You're gonna get a lot of feedback, but that's very helpful for beginners to get, again, that crisp line variation. And I definitely think that I get crisper lines with this brush pen, but I prefer the writing experience of this one because you just get a little bit more control and you get more, like just more control. And I think now, that I've practiced a bit, I appreciate that just a bit more. But both of these are a great option. I would definitely recommend getting both of them. And they actually also sell colors now, which is super, super cool. They only sell them in the hard nibbed one, which makes me very sad. And that's also part of the reason why I don't have them, just because I don't really feel like I'd appreciate that as much. But these two are my favorites. Again, I do prefer the softer over the harder one, but both of these are great. Definitely recommend them. And especially for beginners, it's great to like have, get this one to like practice with initially and then when you feel more comfortable, you can move on to the soft nib pen and really test your skills out. I think this is a great combo and usually they're sold together as well. And then the final of the small, I guess we'll call them nibbed pens is this and this is the Faber-Castell Pit Artists brush pen. And this pen is actually the only colored brush pen that I have in my collection, and, um, aside from the watercolor pens. But those aren't like really, they're like they're brush pens, but like this is the, this is a real, real deal. Um, no playing around brush pen. So I actually did screw up the nib on this one a little bit. so. My line variation is not as crisp as it once was, but that's also because this nib is a little bit weird. It's, as you can see, it's very, um, it's very skinny. Let me see if I can get it to, yeah. It's real skinny and long. It, this is not a plastic nib. It's more of a felt tip nib, kind of like what you'd see on a felt tip marker. Um, I love this color. This is the Filetho. I don't, I, I honestly can't pronounce this. I'm so sorry. I'm butchering it. I hope you guys can see that on screen. The color is right there, but it's sort of like this um, almost, not quite, it's like a Tiffany blue, except with a little bit more green in it. And it is a green, but it's got a lot of like that light blue, turquoise kind of aquamarine going on. And I love that color. And it's so nice, especially when it's paired with my Uniball Signo Gold um, gel pen. I love addressing cards with this brush pen. I absolutely love it. It's so nice. I got this on sale at Michael's. Normally, these are like $4 a pen, which to me is like so insanely overpriced. It's crazy. I would never spend $4 on this pen. And quite frankly, it's just like it's okay. The nib wore down really, really quickly for the price, which was very disappointing to me. Like with the Tombow ones, the Pentel ones, and the Zebra ones, I don't really wear down the nib before I run out of ink. This one, it's still got ink in it and I wore down the nib, which is pretty annoying. And I understand that I do have a heavy hand. Full disclaimer, I do have a heavy hand. Um, but for the price, I kind of expected more. And I don't know, it's just okay. I don't really like the the thin nib. It takes a lot to get used to. Um, it's it's okay. Like I really love the colors. Like I said, I know Faber Castell sells like actual pens, sort of to rival like the Pig Microns and the Stadler um, India Ink pens. I know they're India Ink pens, but I don't remember what they're actually called. But you know those kinds of pens. Um, so I might try those colors because I think these colors are absolutely stunning. But the brush pen is just kind of like meh, especially for the price. And I wouldn't recommend buying these unless you got them on sale. Now, the final pens that I'm going to show you guys are the large brush tip pens, which is for me, I have an Artist Loft watercolor dual tip marker and the Tombow ABT dual brush pen. I had a video about both of these pens on my channel a while ago, but it was really bad. So I decided to private it. And if you guys saw that video, I'm sorry, because it just like, it was kind of meh. And the reason that I also decided to take that video off my channel is because I just am not like a big brush pen person. I know like everybody and their mom on YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, Tumblr, um, I've seen these on Twitter actually too, which is insane to me. Um, everybody loves these pens. Tombow ABT dual brush pens. 
I hate him. Like, this one, maybe I got a bad one. Um, but also using this one, I just, I like smaller brush pens. And for what I do, smaller brush pens just make more sense. I don't do, or I don't take on any projects where a large brush pen would be beneficial to me. And all of my brush, large brush pen needs can be accomplished by my Crayola Super Tips, which are so much less expensive so much better quality in my opinion and can hold up to my heavy handedness for me these j pens just don't make the cut i don't like um like the it's just so hard to control and i definitely wouldn't recommend this for beginners the pens actually also fray really easily this one is frayed um unfortunately so obviously you don't get the full crisp effect um it's just, it's not the greatest pen, in my opinion. The best part about this pen is the fact that it is dual-tipped, but I don't really like the marker tip, to be honest with you. If I do like marker tips, I either use my Crayolas, which, again, I keep going back to my Crayolas, or I actually have the Stabilo Pen 68 felt tip markers. This has no use for me. I can't actually show you the Artist Loft one because this one dried out, which... It's cheaper than the Tombow, but you definitely get what you pay for. I think I actually do um, prefer the marker tip on this one to the Tombow. To me, it's just these aren't great investments. So I'm sorry if you were looking for a review on these pens. My review is I don't like them. Um, there's much better reviews out on YouTube or on blogs for people who actually do really want to use these pens or are interested in them. I'm just not personally a huge fan of them. Um, but if you have projects that are larger, you have better hand control than I do, then I would definitely recommend giving them a shot. I definitely wouldn't recommend them for beginners, um, but if you're a more advanced brush letter and you wanna take these on, I would recommend them, I guess. I wouldn't recommend them really, but Again, if you're interested in them, I say give them a shot. I got this one on sale too at Michael's. Definitely recommend just getting singles from Michael's instead of buying a full set, trying them out. And if you like them, you can definitely get the full sets because these are pricey. These are less so, but I think that in terms of quality, these are probably better. So those are all of my brush pens that I actually own. I'm excited to get a few more because this has kind of been my collection for the last few months, actually maybe like a year. So I'm excited to try out some new brush pens, see what else I can get my hands on. If you have any questions about these, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.